Welcome to the ABI Snapshot, where we spotlight critical findings and the latest research from a global team of analysts. In this snapshot, we're speaking with Michael Lerner, Principal Analyst, who will share insights into the digitalization of the mining industry. So Michael, how do mining operators differ from other industrial and manufacturing environments? Yeah, this is an interesting thing to start off with because what we've got in the mining industry really is these operations are absolutely running at huge scale, but also what's really important here is the safety considerations. Now, if I take scale first, it really is the size of the facility. So for instance, you've got people in the mining plants or are working kilometers underground or in vast open cast mines. They're operating gigantic equipment for extraction of minerals from the earth. And then you look at the trucks you sometimes see on these open cast sites at least, and they're, they're as tall as houses. So all these mining firms are really also building their own railway systems to get the ores out into the into the ships, into the marketplace. So really is the scale. And in terms of somewhere like Australia, you've got the railways that are going up hundreds of kilometers from the middle of the, middle of the um, country to the, to the coastlines. And then we look about safety. Then you've got these gigantic equipment. You've got autonomous trucks. There's giant trucks wandering around the place. Then you've got the environmental concerns. So there's still the risk of explosions, seismic movements. And just that's just a couple of instances where safety is important in these, these uh, mining plants. But also, it's not like um, you can rectify these situations quickly, because given that a lot of the mining plants, they're, they're hundreds of kilometers away from other cities and towns. Interesting. So is it safe to assume then that mining firms are investing heavily in digital technologies or no? Well, you'd expect so, given so the size and the safety implications, but it's not necessarily the case. It's more of a one of those fudge, fudges, yes and no. So the political answer there. So each site really is unique and it is genuinely unique. You often hear it in terms of factors that we're just unique, but that you're still four walls with a few machines. Whereas here, each site is unique. They've got location, their location but not not just their location but their geology so sites operate with a lot of autonomy from the headquarters so what you have is the solutions and the pushback that the solution is not suitable for us in our environment but also you have to think about the staff members in mining plants a lot of them sort of skew a little bit older not necessarily an attractive proposition for gen z's or gen or millennials so they're not necessarily digital savvy and see the benefits of the technology what it can bring to bear in 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 the mining plants but on a positive note, what we've got going on now is productivity, productivity and yield, or quality, all challenges to these mining operators. They're wanting to get as much out of the ground as possible. And it's not as easy as the um, uh, beginning of the last century, for example, where you can just keep creating more and more mines as and when you find new um, hotspots. You have to make more out of less. And that's obviously a common refrain and a common driver for digital technologies. So really what we're finding is Re, what, looking at productivity, looking at efficiency. And what you also have is if you're looking to transport um, your mineral by boat, those boats don't come on a, on a regular basis. Sometimes they only come sort of these huge cargo ships, they can only come sort of every six months and to take the iron ore, for example, to places like China. So whereas you can't, you can't just fill it twice. So you have to get the maximum out of the ground, the maximum to the ports so that those um, cargo ships go as, as full as possible. Interesting. So what can technology vendors do to encourage miners to invest more in technology? Yeah, it's a, that's even more challenging. I'm uh, unfortunately trying to be positive here. It's like uh, what happens here is, so we've got these mines running very autonomously and very on an individual basis. And not only that, they were relying on references. So you have to come to them with solid references from other, other operations and other engagements for them to actually be interested. That's one of the common refrains that I hear from the, um, speaking to people who are suppliers in the industry. So that begs the question. So someone needs to go first. Someone has to take that sort of small R risk in terms of making an investment in a digital technology. Fortunately, uh, the large mining co companies such as Rio Tinto, BHP Billet, and Anglo American, to name three, are investing heavily in digital technologies. For example, Rio Tinto has been using those large autonomous trucks I described earlier since as early as 2008, and now has got also been investing in autonomous trains. So really, mining is really far and away uh, farther ahead than a lot of other industries when it comes to automation, and really sort of um, a good 
example for the automobile industry when they're, they're looking at sort of autonomous vehicles. What also is a benefit to the technology supplier community is the fact that a lot of the mining firms have articulated their plans when it comes to digital technology and it's high profile in terms of getting those supplies out of the ground. So it can really stand them in good stead going forward. If you're not, and also I'd just like to add is it's not the case that um, you can treat the mining vertical just like any other vertical and just say, okay, we already deal with automobile plants, well, let's go for mining. Is You have to supply these teams with all the interesting references and so forth, but also if you're on the outside, you can utilize innovation centers. So one example of moving to Canada is the Norcat mining plant. And this is an innovation center. It has it's even had its own underground uh, mining operation and where it is really set up to help suppliers and the mining community just to understand the potential of digital technologies. So, so technology suppliers can demonstrate the solutions. They can even invite their potential customers to those innovation centers to really sort of get to grips with what's possible. Interesting. And, and what types of technologies are the miners prioritizing and, and what type of impacts will they have? Yeah, I think what's really interesting here is is that such a variety of technologies we've already spoken about uh, those autonomous vehicles and automating uh, transportation but i think if we go back to the um original point and the first question about and uh, what's driving investment and here we took really what to think about is safety and now you've got mining firms really investing in sort of hundreds and hundreds of sensors to collect that environmental data because not only are we looking at things underground and the, any the changes in sort of seismic movements they also you got a lot of wastewater and these wastewater is can be the size of reservoirs so you really got to keep track of the condition of hazardous materials hazardous assets so this is also done not just by sensors, but heavily investing in drones. So drones to do the capture and the scale of the scale of the drones to really go across the whole of the plant and the whole of the facility to collect those images that can then be captured once the drone returns to home. Also, you've got the feeds into um, from the drones to remote experts. So this is where a real um, heavy use of um, augmented reality. So really trying to find out more about what's going on underground, having those remote experts really providing that external advice. And then you've got the other investments um, around analytics, and more of which we see in other industries. So you've got the predictive maintenance, all the way uh, analyzing the actual uh, mining operations to optimize process as well, and all those simulations. Talking of simulations, we are beginning to see investments in a digital twin. So looking at safety, monitoring where those staffs are underground or wherever they are in location to really not only um, utilize it from a safety perspective, but again, I'm talking about the scale, how do you then optimize those processes? So again, virtual reality, augmented reality, feeding into digital twins. All this means really in terms of hard numbers, which you uh, are sort of alluded in your question and we can't get away from that, we we'll do some good forecasting in this sector. So by 2030, we are forecasting that the mining um, organizations will be spending over $9 billion on digital technologies. Now this is up from just under $6 billion in 2021. So a good increase in spending, but lots of different uh, technologies being invested in. So lots for the technology suppliers to get interested in and uh, target those mining companies with. Interesting. Michael, thanks so much for your time. I really appreciate it. If you'd like to learn more about the digitalization of the mining in industry, visit abi.link slash AN5424 to view the full report. Thank you again. Thank you. Ed.